Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at the 2023 Macroeconomics Exam. This is question number one from set one. In order to be ready for this question, you should be through unit five. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into it. So this question starts off with the country of Vanderlandia. They are in short run equilibrium with a real GDP of $500 million and the full employment level of real GDP is $550 million. We have to start off by drawing a correctly labeled graph of the ASAD model and we need to show the current level of output and price level labeled Y1 and PL1 and we have to label the full employment level of output YF. Now before we start, we need to look at the numbers that we have up in our question. The current real GDP output is $500 million and the full employment level of real GDP output is $550 million. That means we have a recessionary gap because our current level of output is less than our full employment level of output. So we're going to start off with our axes, that's PL for price level on that Y axis and real GDP on that X axis. We have a downward sloping aggregate demand curve labeled AD, an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve labeled SRAS. And at the intersection of those two curves, we have Y1 and PL1. Next, we have to add in our long run aggregate supply curve to the right of our current Y1 output and have YF below. That ASAD model shows the recessionary gap that the question calls for. You're going to get two points for that graph, one point for AI and a second point for AII. For part B, we have to assume there is no government action taken to restore full employment. And we have to explain how the economy will adjust in the long run. In order to answer this question, we have to remember that the self-correction of the economy comes from a shift of the short run aggregate supply curve. And that shift happens when there are changes in wages or other resource prices. Since we have a recessionary gap, the answer is going to be that in the long run, wages and other resource prices will fall. That will cause the short run aggregate supply curve to shift to the right as a result of lower input costs for businesses. And that increases real GDP output until it is equal to YF. And if you have an answer, something like that, you're going to get yourself a point. For part BII, we just have to indicate if the price level in Vanderlandia will be greater than, less than, or equal to PL1 as a result of the self-correction shift from the short run aggregate supply curve. If we go back to take a look at our graph, we can see what would happen. Shifting that short run aggregate supply curve to the right until our new equilibrium output is equal to YF shows that we have a lower price level than where we started at PL1. And so to get the point for BII, you simply have to say less than. Now that we're on to part C, we're going to assume that instead, policymakers in Vanderlandia consider changing government spending to restore full employment output. And we have a marginal propensity to save a 0.2. We are going to calculate the minimum amount of spending needed and the direction of that change required to completely close that output gap. And we have to show our work. Let's remember that the spending multiplier is going to be one divided by the MPS. And when we plug in the numbers and do the math, that gives us a spending multiplier of five. We also have to remember that the output gap is the potential real GDP minus the actual real GDP. In this case, we have a recessionary gap of $50 million. Next, we're going to find the new amount of government spending required to close that gap by taking the gap and dividing it by the multiplier. So the $50 million gap divided by the multiplier of five gives us a $10 million change in government spending. And since we are trying to increase real GDP and government spending increases real GDP, you also have to identify that as a $10 million increase. And if you have all that work in the yellow there, you get yourself a point. Next, we're going to show the impact of that increase in government spending on the ASAD model we already drew. That increase in government spending is going to shift that aggregate demand curve to the right, increasing the price level and increasing the real GDP output. And you're going to label that new price level PL2. And if you got that, you get yourself your next point. For part D, we have to graph the loanable funds market and show the impact of the increase in government spending on the real interest rate. Since this is the graph of the loanable funds market, we're going to label that X axis quantity of loanable funds. The Y axis is also mentioned in the question, and that is the real interest rate. And we have a downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve, and at the equilibrium, we have the quantity and real interest rate mark. When the government increases spending, it's going to have to increase its deficit to finance that new spending. And the impact of that deficit spending is called crowding out. On the graph, that is shown as a rightward shift of the demand curve, causing an increase in the equilibrium interest rate, or you can also show a decrease in the supply of loanable funds. Either one of these answers is acceptable as long as you have the real interest rate increasing on your graph. 
you will get one point for the graph drawn regardless of the shift and a second point for shifting one of the curves the correct direction and increasing that real interest rate. For part EI, we have to say what will happen to the price of bonds as a result of the increase in the interest rate we just saw. In order to answer this question, we have to remember that there's an inverse relationship between interest rates and bond prices. And since we just saw an increase in the interest rate, that means we are going to have a decrease in bond prices. Simply say decrease and you get your next point. For part EII, we have to say what will happen to the economic growth rate of Vanderlandia as a result of the increase in the interest rate. In order to answer a question about economic growth, we have to remember that growth happens when there's an increase in the quality or quantity of resources. And the crowding out effect tells us that an increase in the interest rate we saw a moment ago will actually decrease gross investment. And so we just have to say what's going to happen in regards to the crowding out. So the answer is decrease because the higher interest rate will cause less gross investment and as a result, less capital formation. And if you have an answer something like that, specifying the word capital, you get yourself a point. And there you have it. Those are the answers to the 2023 set one question number one. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up that total review booklet. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.